Semester B, week one. I now want to introduce the subject of harmony, specifically what Schillinger calls special harmony. You can read about special harmony beginning on page 359 of the Schillinger system. Special harmony deals with existing well-known harmonic styles, ranging from the classical to the early 20th century, but it does this in a general and non-specific way. You won't find many references to the Neapolitan chord, for example. Rather, Schillinger attempts to generalise and rationalise the entire process and allow the composer to make specific choices. Harmonic procedure breaks down into three key areas roots, structures and voice leading. Root progressions, the melody and the bass, come out of scales. Structures, triads, tetrads and so forth, also emerge from scales as they undergo the process of expansion. Voice leading follows from the first two. In other words, once the roots and the structures have been derived from the scale, one can move on to think about the connections between the voices of neighbouring chords. This week, we'll approach voice leading informally. That's by a sort of rule of thumb, simply trying to minimise the movement of voices and avoid parallelism between adjacent chords. Voice leading is very important. It influences the melodic dimension of a harmonic progression and also contributes to textural changes of register and spacing, which determines the smoothness or otherwise of the chord flow. Going back a step, I said that roots and structures originated in scales, and so it follows that the choice of scale is all important. As we saw in week three of semester A, the number of potential scales is vast, but for the purposes of special harmony, they fall into two broad categories. Conventional seven note scales, such as major and minor, and all the rest. Now, a root progression may be composed from any scale or a pattern of intervals. And in this sense, it's a relatively free form. Of course, it must make sense as a baseline but it needs to be, it need not be exclusive to the traditional seven note scale. Chord structures, on the other hand, must be derived from the first expansion of the seven note major or minor scale, because special harmony demands harmonic structures composed of the interval of thirds. Pure diatonic harmony, typical of the 18th century, derives both the roots and the scale structures from a single seven note scale. Diatonic symmetric harmony is a form in which the root progression comes out of a seven note scale, major or minor, while the chord structures are taken from all of the available forms that come out of seven note scales. In fact, surprisingly, there are really only four triad structures available to major and minor scales in all. Those are major, minor, diminished and augmented. And there are only seven four note structures, not as many as you might think. Imposing chord structures at will on top of the roots, rather than letting one scale dictate everything, allows the development of a type of hybrid diatonic harmony, diatonic symmetric harmony. And much of the harmonic practice of the 19th and early 20th centuries could be described as being of this sort. Pure symmetric forms of harmony emerge from roots progressions composed either from pure symmetric scales, whole tone scales and so forth, or from just freely chosen interval patterns combined with structures of thirds taken from the first expansion of the major or minor scale. We won't spend much time here on the subject of chromatic decoration of the harmonic progression, the so-called theory of directional units, which simply allows chromatic notes and non-chord tones to be inserted between the principal chord tones, either as melodic adornments or crushed into the chord as added notes. 
Finally, it must be stressed, as with all these techniques, that this is a rationalised approach intended as a way into composition, rather than as a method of explanation or analysis of any particular piece of music.